So I wonder then if you could clarify, I think there's still this conception or misconception out there that this is like an old people disease and that really it's only elderly populations that are mm-hmm. at risk. I think in Canada, we've heard a lot about uh, elderly populations in these yeah. nursing homes and how that's been a huge problem. But I'm wondering if you could clarify to what extent we've seen younger Canadians who have both gotten sick or required hospitalization. Well, that, that's, that's, a, that's a very good point because uh, as I said before, everyone's equally susceptible to becoming infected in terms of who actually uh, uh, be, has a higher chance of becoming uh, quite sick and needing hospitalization. It is true if you look at the statistics that uh, older people, but also I would say anyone with what we call an underlying medical condition, if you've got uh, some condition where your immune system isn't working uh, as well as it could or should be, then obviously you, you would have a greater chance of what we have uh, call having complications if you were to become infected. But what's uh, I think uh, interesting about this virus uh, is that uh, it really uh, it doesn't discriminate. And uh, many young people, and I've, I've seen stories of uh, young people uh, in good health, uh, even athletes who, who exercise regularly, et cetera, you know, good cardiovascular capacity, uh, they've been hit quite hard. So it's uh, sometimes something that you can't always predict uh, because uh, uh, some people, the way their body reacts to a, a virus may be completely different. It has nothing to do with their, quote, uh, what we call prior health condition or medical condition. And so I would say that there's actually about, I would say, 30% of, of, uh, of all of our cases are actually under the age of 40. So that's quite a significant percentage uh, of people overall who have uh, uh, the infection. The other part I think that, that that's kind of scary is that I would call this a very sneaky virus. You know, in some ways, you know, some viruses like you see in the movies, you know, are so deadly that everyone that comes in contact with it ends up dying. So it's easy to sort of to look at the trail and go, oh, yeah, so-and-so was in touch with so-and-so because look at them. They all ended up dying. But what's yeah, happening I here? I saw Contagion. With... <laughs> Sorry? I saw Contagion. <laughs> exactly. That's one of my favorite films, by the way. <laughs> but in this case, well, what's happening is that there are some people, uh, many people who actually might have what we call mild infection. Uh, maybe just a bit of a runny nose and cough and not even uh, be aware that they have COVID-19. And that's the scary part because they unknowingly have obviously passed it on to others who then might be the ones at risk of developing uh, more serious uh, complications. And that's why this virus has really spread so so rapidly, I would say, because of this element where individuals who uh, might have mild symptoms and not really be aware and only maybe in sort of hindsight recognize, oh, I I probably had COVID-19, have passed it on to others. And so I think it would be really sad, and it has happened where, for example, maybe uh, younger people or folks uh, who uh, maybe uh, haven't really suffered from the from the infection have then gone to maybe visit, for example, their, their grandmother in a long-term care facility. And that's how, uh, uh, in many cases here in Canada, it got introduced in terms of those of what we call high-risk settings where a lot of older folks who obviously then would be at a more serious risk of uh, getting complications have become infected. And in those settings, uh, it's challenging. You know, there are a lot of people living sometimes uh, more than two to a a room, et cetera. And uh, uh, with the the personnel also uh, having to deal with multiple residents, uh, you can see there's been quite a few outbreaks in uh, what we call uh, long-term care facilities. 